Okay, we're going to finish up this chapter for logical design and just finish up these slides um, where we left off with many to many relationships. We talked about one to one and one to many. And now we have uh, this phenomenon called a many to many relationship. And that just means that an entity, each record in an entity, can have many related records in the second entity and vice versa. The second entity can have many related records in the uh, other entity. Uh, the second bullet here is the most important. It says many to many relationships <coughs> are legal and logical design, but no database management system can implement them. Um, that means that when you're in the design process, you know, in the logical stages, before you have your database created, um, you may run across a many-to-many -many relationship between two entities. For instance, you would say, oh, an order can have many items on it. You know, a customer could order many items on one order. And each item in your database uh, could have, you know, could they could be on many orders. You know, many different customers on many orders may have the same item. So a relationship between orders and items might be a many-to-many. You know, here's what the symbol would look like, but eventually you would break these many-to-many -many down into two one-to-many's. And that's what we do. Here's an example of a many-to-many. -many. This is a nice example in the textbook. One that's easily understood, I believe. A magazine could have many subscribers. And each subscriber could subscribe to many magazines. So if you're creating a database for a... Uh, a magazine company that's tracking, or a company that's selling magazines, they might sell many different magazines to many subscribers. Each subscriber might have many magazines. So you could come up with something like this in your early logical design. But we can't do that. We know we can't implement it, so we got to break it down into two one-to-many relationships. And here's how it's done. You create what's called a linking entity between the two tables. And then you would have two one-to-many relationships instead of that many-to-many. -many. Here's what that would look like with the magazine subscription, and or magazine and subscribers. You see we created another entity here. This is that linking entity that they're referring to. It's a linking entity, sometimes referred to as an associative entity. And there are many different names that different textbook uses. But this was one that was created to break up the many, the many that existed between the magazine and subscriber. You can see the primary key from the two original entities come down into the linking entity as foreign keys. You can have other attributes. And then you get you also assign a what's called a surrogate primary key. This is just a field that is um, made up to become the primary key of this particular linking entity. This data really has no meaning to anyone. No one's ever going to look at the data in this primary key because the records in this linking entity would be accessed through the subscriber or the magazine entities. So that's the best way how to, to handle a many-to-many -many, uh, relationship. You can see now there are two one-to-many relationships. And here's some of the data, what the data might look like in those tables. Uh, just remember the data that they're showing. This is a limited amount of data, obviously. They're only selling two magazines. They have three subscribers. But imagine this on a larger scale. Here's what the linking table would look like, the data. All right, the cardinality, let's talk a little bit more about that. Cardinality, it says, describes the number of permissible relationships between two entities. And you have a maximum cardinality and a minimum cardinality. So, for instance, um, the maximum cardinality, when you look at the crow's feet notation, that's the symbol that's right next to the entity, you know, the rectangle part of the ERD. The minimum cardinality is uh, on the inside. And that's a 0 or a 1. So the minimum cardinality, you're always going to see a 0 or a 1. 
and then the maximum is either going to be a one or many. Okay. And I talked a little bit about that. Uh, let me go back a little bit. Let me go back a couple steps here. Talk about the cardinality just a little bit more when I have it. ERD. Okay, I went back to slide 28. Here's, we'll, talk, we'll look at this relationship line. This says a subscriber might subscribe to zero magazines. That's the, the minimum cardinality is right there. Or a subscriber might have many subscriptions. Each subscription refers back to possibly zero subscribers. I think that's an our error on this slide, actually. You would think if you have a subscription, you're going to require the subscriber's key field to be filled in. So this should actually be a 1 right here. That's an error in this slide. Same on the other side. If you have a subscription, you're going to require that you, know, you need to know what magazine it is. Excuse me. So this minimum cardinality is going to be a 1. So this is saying a magazine might not have any subscribers at a minimum cardinality, or a magazine might have many subscriptions to it. Each subscription goes back to one and only one. So that's that should be a one here and on this side. Okay. So let me go back to where I left off. I'm going to go down here now to the. Oh, this is near the end of the slide. Slide 32. There's types of entities. It says an entity can take on different roles. Here's the common roles. You either have a domain entity. That's an entity that describes a core business element. So in that previous example, a magazine, that was a core business element for that company. So that's a domain entity. Uh, the, the subscriber, that is a core business element for that business. That's a domain entity. Most tables or most entities are domain. Like an employee entity would be an order, a customer, a student. Those are domain entities because those describe, those entities describe a core business element. The linking entity, you just saw one of them, those are created to break up a many-to-many -many relationship. So there could be a few linking entities in your database. Then there's something called a lookup entity. We haven't really seen any examples of these yet. That'll be coming up in other chapters, but you, you can think of this as a, some kind of code to look up a value. Okay, so you might uh, have a code in your employee table that describes their level in the company. You know, you might give them a code of A1, and then you can link that um, employee code, say, to another table that describes those codes. Maybe an A1 is a uh, entry level employee, and an A2 they got one promotion or something like that. That's a lookup table. We'll see. I think we'll see some examples coming up of that. A weak entity, all that means is that entity depends on another entity for its meaning. For instance, if you had an employee entity and you had another entity that kept track of their dependents, well, that's a weak entity that dependent is a weak entity because it wouldn't exist without the employee entity. So as you design your database, um, this ERD is really the main diagram that's going to communicate to others what the design of your database looks like. So your ERD diagram may change and evolve as you have meetings with your the end users and management and whatnot. And it says it's important to keep all the diagrams, all the different versions and notations about changes that were made until you come up with a final ERD. Okay, that's the end of this chapter. I'll see you next week in Chapter 5.